without further ado, please give a warm welcome to my colleague, Ms. Christina Grozik. Thank you. A call to attention. These are tingshas. They are really good to use to signify that something is about to begin or we are concluding something. They are part of the sonic energy line, which we're going to be talking about today. So again, as Andrew said, my name is Christina Grozik. I've been studying wellness modalities for about 15 years, actively teaching, training, working with clients and corporations for about seven. Out of all of the modalities that I've studied, sound is the one that has resonated with me the most. So much so, I took about two and a half years off to explore sound, what it means, sound vibration frequency, silence and wellness, and produced a documentary called Going Om. I know the power of sound, I know that you know the power of sound as well. So we're gonna explore that a little bit today. You can see all of these amazing sonic energy tools that we brought, we're gonna get into it shortly but let's look at what it is. Sound therapy, sound meditation, sound healing, sound journeys, sound um, exploration, right, immersion. How many of you have experienced anything that falls under those terms? All right, excellent. Well, very good, and then the ones that haven't, we're gonna touch base on that a little bit today so you'll get a taste of it. So there are a lot of different terms that it can be called, um, there is not one organization that regulates it or sets a standard for it as to this is what it is, this is what we call it. Each practitioner is going to do things a little bit differently. I can tell you the way that I do it. I call mine sound journeys. So what would happen is I would invite you into your room, hopefully a quiet space. I would invite you to take some breaths. Maybe we do some light movements, maybe some vocal toning. And then I would invite you to find a comfortable position. Usually that is laying down, if that's something that's accessible to you. If not, a seated position works as well. We would close the eyes, soften the gaze. I would ask you to connect with your breath. Breathing and being. Breathing and being. This is sound for relaxation, a way to calm the mind, to just let go, to be the human part of human being. We are very often human doers. We're always on the go, 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 go. We don't really allow ourselves the chance to just be. This is a great opportunity to do that. At the end of the session, I would invite you to come back with some breath work, maybe some movement, maybe some vocal toning at the end, and then we would move on with our day, hopefully in a more relaxed state. So that is how it may look. Now you can also use it as a secondary modality. So what does that mean? Maybe someone who is a massage therapist, a Reiki practitioner, a clinical therapist, a polarity practitioner, or even the medical community can use it. So they can incorporate it and integrate it into their primary modality. Who else might this be for? Well, it is for everyone. It is for everyone because we can all use it for self-care. So now that we've explored the terms, now that we've explored what it might look like, what are some of the benefits? Well, Andrew touched base on those a little bit ago. I'll give you a few more. Calming the mind, finding focus, finding clarity, reducing stress and anxiety, aiding in digestion, improving sleep. And here's a big one encouraging a parasympathetic state. So when we look at the parasympathetic state, what are we looking at? Rest and relaxation for our central nervous system. Very important because this is when the body like takes care of itself, right? The body knows how to align itself, how to recalibrate. But very often we are in a sympathetic, a sympathetic state. Our society is sympathetic, right? How many of you are thinking, oh, what do I have to do after this meeting? What do I have to do by the end of the day? What do I have to do by the end of the week? Maybe next week, maybe three years from now, or maybe you're still thinking about something that happened yesterday. Maybe somebody made a comment to you or did something that you're holding on to, and you're like, I still can't believe they did that, right? We're either living in the future or maybe in the past. If anyone's familiar with spiritual teacher Eckhart Tolle, his big thing is be here now. 
Be here now in the present moment, finding awareness for the present moment. And when we do that, everything shifts and changes. The way we respond, the way we react to situations changes. So parasympathetic, very important. I've done some work with a doctor. Her name's Dr. Michelle Thompson. She was recently, recently featured in the New York Times for her work. She was in the film that we did, and we've become very, very close friends. Her motto is meditation over medication. She will prescribe things like yoga, sound therapy, breath work. She is absolutely phenomenal, and we work very closely together. She is a big advocate of what we are looking at today. So how does it work? How does all of this work? Well, we are all energy. We are all energy. Albert Einstein said that everything is energy, and there, that's all there is to it. Nikola Tesla said that if you want to understand the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. I love that quote so much that that is how we open the film, and it's on every single movie poster we have out there. Very powerful quote. Again, when you change your perspective in the way you're seeing the world, everything changes. Sound is a great way to do that. The World Health Organization has stated that noise pollution is a growing threat to our well-being. And it's getting harder and harder to find those quiet spaces. But when we do, when we find the silence, that's when everything really happens, right? Energy, going back to energy, we are all vibrating particles. We are all energy. We are moving particles that look like we are in a solid state called the human form. Energy is moving throughout. Have any of you heard the term chakra or chakra, depending on your school? Yeah, so some of us know. For those that do not, they are energy systems within the body. There are many, many of them. In the US, we're most familiar with the seven primary ones. We've got the crown of the head, the third eye, we have the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, the sacral, and then the root, which is the base of the spine. Each one has a symbol attached to it, a note attached to it, a color attached to it, and characteristics attached to it. What does that mean? For example, the crown of the head. The color is indigo. It is the connection to our higher self, the connection to the divine, the universe, whatever that may be for you. The note is B. So if you have energy, think of it in terms of a current. Right, you have energy, it's flowing, all of a sudden you put something to block it, but the current is still active. What's going to happen? The energy is going to build up, you release that blockage and there's a spark. Think of us in the same way. Energy is moving throughout us, life happens to us, we start holding on to things, right? We hold on to that comment that happened yesterday, we just can't let it go. Mentally, emotionally, physically, we gather things, we store them. And when we do, we create blockages, energetically speaking, within our systems. When we have a blockage and we are not willing to let go of it, then what happens? Inflammation settles in. When inflammation settles in, then what happens? We move closer to a state of dis-ease. Make sense so far? Okay. Energetically speaking, we put sound vibration towards that, it slowly starts to dissipate that blockage. Now the person has to be willing to let go of whatever that is, but it will help to aid in that, supposedly. Who's ready to get into the sound side of it? You guys with me? All right, okay, let's do it. So metal singing bowls, very common, maybe a beginner um, that's looking to explore the world of sound would go with a metal singing bowl. Uh, Tibetan singing bowls, Himalayan singing bowls, called a lot of different things. We will call them singing bowls. Minel offers several different kinds. This would be the entry level. It's called the Universal Series. It's a lighter weight bowl, lower price point, several ways to play all of the bowls. You can either strike them or you can sing them. Different mallets are going to produce different sounds. So let's check this one out. All right, so we switch mallets. Resonant mallet without the suede. And 
now we are singing the bowl, hence the term singing bowl. We move into a felt tip mallet, and the movement is much like a pendulum swinging back and forth, striking the top here. The felt mallet you'd probably want to use if you're working with a smaller group, maybe one to two people, or if you're a massage therapist, you have somebody on your table and you're playing on the body if you have been trained to do so. Different kind of sound, lower, softer sound. All right. And then we also have um, more therapeutic series. So we've got the Cosmo series, we've got the Energy series, and then the decorative series, right? So some of us will buy according to how it fills, some of us will buy according to the notes, some of us will buy according to the chakra that it fits into, some of us will say that is beautiful, you know what, I want it because it's pretty, right? I don't know how well you can see this, but there is an etching on it, a beautiful, beautiful bowl. It is the engraved series. It also sounds really nice. And then we have the origin series. So if you see this bowl, some people will go for this because there's this mystique to what we're doing here, right? It's like, ooh, ah, this ancient mystery. It's really not. This is a new bowl. It is designed to look like an antique bowl, but it is not. We also have the ornamental series, the smaller bowls, bowls that you would find in different markets, maybe in Thailand, Nepal, things of that nature. They fit nicely in the palm of your hand. You can travel with them too very easily. The metal bowls, we move into singing bowls. The same thing, different mallets will affect different sounds. They're gonna impact it in a different kind of way. The most basic is the frosted crystal singing bowl. So maybe some of you are into crystals or gemstones. I know it's growing in popularity. People are seeking them out based on challenges that they may have. Ooh, I heard that this is really good for the heart. Or ooh, I heard this is really good for protection. So you'll go buy a stone, maybe keep it in your pocket, wear a necklace with it. Growing in popularity, this is the crystal quartz bowl. You will have people that will buy them for that reason. Again, you can strike them, you can sing them. Different mallets are gonna produce different sounds. And then we can sing. All right, all of them are played the same way. Strike or sing them. I would not recommend holding them in your hand. They can be very fragile. I would not recommend using the mallets you would use on the metal bowls either. You wanna use either rubber or silicone for them. Moving on to the set of de very decorative, beautiful colored bowls. Maybe some of you are saying, oh, I've heard about gemstone infused bowls. I wonder if that's it. These are not them, but what did I say has seven in it, right? The chakras. So each one has a certain color and a certain note attached to it. That corresponds with the chakra they're attached to. The green is for the heart. Very common people often seek out the heart chakra. So the note on it is F. The color, like I said, is green. You would play it the same way. Do we have gemstone infused bowls? We absolutely do. This happens to be the amethyst bowl. Some people will buy it based on the gemstone infused in it. So it's mixed with crystal and amethyst. We also off, uh, offer rose quartz and emerald. Like I said, I wouldn't recommend picking these up and playing them like that. So we made a handheld crystal singing bowl. Played in the same way, you can strike it or you can sing it. And then we move into the chalice, which is new this year. Very decorative. You may see a symbol on it that is the flower of life. You will have people that will buy it because of the symbols attached to a certain bowl. So that covers the metal bowls, the crystal bowls. And if somebody is looking to add to their collection, or maybe they're a beginner and they're just getting into it, right? We've got all kinds of great tools for that. These are the energy chimes. So you'll see it's a chime attached to a wooden block. It's got these really great grooves in it, which makes it very easy to move around with them or to wand them over the body. Wooden mallet, you just strike. Very easy to travel with as well. Another great tool that you can add to your collection tuning forks. How many people in here have used tuning forks? All right, 
Fantastic. Minol makes two different ones, the tune tuning forks and then the tune therapy forks. The difference, the gauge on the tune is smaller. You'll see it's got a shiny coating to it. The matte coating is for the therapy fork, thicker gauge. The way you play them is some people like to use a hockey puck. I just use the palm of my hand. You strike it. You're going to notice you're not hearing a lot of sound, right? But what you will feel is the vibration of it when you put it on the body. So imagine that vibration applied to the body. All right. And then the grand finale, the gongs. So, so many different kinds of gongs. We, I mean, we are just scratching the surface today, folks. But here are two of the basic ones. We've got a wind gong. We also have a chow gong, also known as a tam-tam. Splashing sound, deeper sound. You could do an entire sound session with just a gong or just a singing bowl. So I told you earlier, some consumers will buy based on the visual aspect. Because people buy in this way, gongs have become very, very decorative. There's so many different kinds of gongs on the market right now with different symbols on it, different patterns on it. These are still wind gongs, so they are like the top gong over there. This is called the coon gong, also known as the sun gong, depending on who you buy it from. And then we've got the yin yang or yin yang gong down here, if you can see it. Perfect harmony, feminine, masculine energies coming together for the perfect balance. All right, you guys still with me? All right, fantastic. So now we're going to do a group activity together. Everyone take seated position, which are already in almost all of you. Tall spine, crown of the head is shining to the sky, closing the eyes or softening the gaze. We're going to take a couple of breaths in through the nose. Breath in, here we go. And release. A breath in. And let it go. All right. This time on the exhale, we are going to do an ohm. Typically, I would say an ohm to go home, but we are all going back to our workday. So we'll do an ohm to go back to our workday. And I want to, when I say we, I mean you and I together. So I want to hear all of your beautiful voices this morning. We'll do the ohm. It's going to sound something like this. Ohm. All right, here we go. A breath in, then we release with the ohm. And release. Ohm. You can open your eyes or focus your gaze if, if uh, you chose not to close them fully. This is the chakra series, so you will see the ohm. I talked about symbols earlier. Maybe you will see the ohm symbol on it. The note corresponds with the crown of the head, as does the symbol. It is a German gong, nickel and silver. And um, we also offer planetary gongs, which perhaps we'll get into another time. I think that is our time for today. Thank you so much for your time, your presence, your energy. I've got all kinds of videos online playing different things, interviewing experts. You're more than welcome to check them out. Again, my name is Christina Grozik. Travel light and be well. <laughs>